Hi, and welcome to another video in the RHCSA video series. This video is on uh, hosting your own VPS or virtual private server to be able to uh, practice the RHCSA exam uh, on the move or, or using a, a cloud-based instance. So it's quite useful, um, certainly if you're not at home or you don't have the, the lab resources uh, to actually have uh, to create a VM um, yourself, then you can use something like a VPS. So the one I've been using uh, and I highly recommend is Hostinger. So Hostinger um, are, are quite unique in the market. We they have a they they will focus mostly on customer customer satisfaction, making sure it's the highest quality service and an affordable price as well. So. Um, Yes, low cost service, and basically it's using uh, a custom a panel, C panel. So um, that's the reason why they can keep the price quite a low. So I've actually got a, a a link for this, so you can go straight to my page, which is hostinger.com/csg. So you get the, the uh, beneficial rates if you do this. And there's currently a uh, a New Year's sale coming on, so um, get that while you can. So it's not much longer now. And if you select VPS hosting and add to cart, you can see it's currently only three ninety five dollars, which is very very uh, cheap. So I've just gone for the one gig plan, but you've also got larger plans here as well. But I think the one big gig plan will be okay. So the, uh, most of these are based on CentOS, which is a free version essentially of Red Hat. There's not many differences. The only thing you'll be missing is stuff like the subscription manager which to be honest is a very small part of the exam so um, you shouldn't worry too much about that there's only maybe one or if if that one question in the exam cool so the first thing to do is once you've created the account you'll get to service management and you'll get an account and I've just created my VPS and you can see I've got standard plan one which I mentioned earlier and you can set a host name if you want to but the important thing here is to scroll down and select the particular operating system and we just select the CentOS 764 bit and click save. It will take a while and it will create the account and then we just want to set a root password. I'll just set something, click save. And just wait for that to do its thing. Okay, so now we're going to have to SSH into this. Oh, I've set a uh, password that's pretty rubbish so maybe I'll have to uh, make it a bit more complex okay <clears throat> it's a root password so obviously it has to be secure and it's also internet facing so it's very important that it's nice and secure so you can use something like putty uh, to SSH to this device there's the IP there and the port um, yeah, I'll put the link below for this, but you can just download it from here. I personally use Kitty, which is like a uh, certainly it's like another version of Putty. It's got a bit more um, a bit more features in it, but you can also do things like password saving and stuff like that. You know, simple things to make your life a little bit easier. So we can just launch Putty or Kitty. You'll, the interfaces are pretty much the same. You can connect via the IPv4, the IPv6 address here. So I'll just select the IPv4. It doesn't really matter too much. And have you have you may have noticed this is CentOS seven rather than CentOS eight. So CentOS the CentOS versions directly follow the Red Hat version. So CentOS seven is Red Hat seven. So we'll have to upgrade it first. So that'll be the first thing we'll have to do. Okay. There's a cat etc. CentOS release, so we can see it currently is um, version 7.7. .7. Okay, so I have some instructions here. So most of it we can just literally copy and paste to make your life easier. And you can see most things will be very fast because you're going through a VPS rather than your own internet connection, so they'll be able to get to the internet a hell of a lot quicker than we can. So most of these commands just need to copy and paste, it will do the rest. <laughs> so at the moment it's installing what's called the EPEL, 
Bilis. And what I'll do is I'll just change the font settings. Just keep doing a couple more font ups. Just make it a little bit bigger, but it's going to be hard to read. Okay, so I'll just go back through what I just did so you don't miss anything. So, first thing was to install. Uh, Yum install the EPL release, uh, which is just an extra packages, um, so we can install that. So we install that, then we're going to install uh, RPM Conf, which is the RPM Packages Manager, uh, Configuration Manager, and then Yum Utils, which is the Yum Package Installer, installer or you know, DNF as well, we mentioned earlier, and it's utility uh, packages for those. So we've installed those two, and you'll see there's some dependencies, which is usual stuff. Uh, make sure to resolve any uh, config issues in RPM, or it shouldn't be any. Okay, so configuration NSS switch. We've got an RPM new, has updated version. So what we can do is merge the configuration files. I think it's probably the best one in most cases. Okay, we will just uh, say why. This default no, I think in that case, which keep the current version, it doesn't matter. And unless you need to use any new features, then in most cases just say no, so this should be okay. Okay, um, let's make sure we've got no package you need to uh, need or require. We're good, and then we go to set for check for orphans. The packages are uh, okay, we've got one. So what they've said is just remove those, right? If something doesn't need to be repaired, uh, we'll leave that there. We'll see how we go. So we need to install DNF as as part of uh, Red Hat 8. And you can see, again, it's very quick to install and download. And we're going to remove yum. It's very bad to use yum anymore after this point. Because yum essentially becomes... Um, redundant because DNF replaces the um, application. So that's removing. So DNF is to remove the um file. So it's just same command line as uh, yum pretty much as we mentioned earlier. And then the rm minus rf is to remove yum and anything under there. And then we do upgrade the operating system. So it's DNF minus y upgrade. And it will go download. Okay, let's go and have a look at next step while we wait for this one. So we now need to download installing new versions of everything. So CentOS 8 is makes sense. So just wait for those to complete first. You can see the download speeds are pretty fast. And we're gonna download and install. Okay. Oops, I tasted that twice, so I'll just cancel that line with Control C. Oh, I didn't actually, it's just very long. <laughs> so DNF minus Y upgrade, and then we're going to point it to a particular RPM. So it's going to go download that and install it, so it's upgraded. Cool, so that's going to basically allow it to go to a release 8.0 of uh, CentOS, and then we're going to upgrade the EPEL package, which is an extra package I mentioned earlier. So we're going to go download those. Then we're going to do a clean up. So clean all just basically cleans up any of the um, already downloaded uh, repository information. Let's get a nice clean repository. Um, Looks good. Try to run the upgrade. Let's try this. Let's see if there's any issues. So DNF minus Y, the release server is now 8. Allow erasing, and we're going to set option delta R, uh, RPM. We're going to then distro sync. So we should. We're going to get uh, a distribution upgrade. So we're going to upgrade to a completely new distribution. You're going to be lots of packages to download and install. 
and we'll see if there's any conflict in. Looks like no conflict in packages so far. So the install's going very well so far. You can see 431 packages, so it's pretty much the a, a large amount of the operating system is being replaced. Excellent. So there's no errors. Looks like it's all good. So now we're going to do the RPM conf minus A, so just any files have been updated. I'm just going to say the default in most cases. Let's do N. Cool. So let's let do that. Ensure the kernel is properly installed. Let's see. And again, I mentioned earlier, it won't be installed, so that's fine. If it's not, let's do this. Okay, and we just do a core minimal install. Okay, now we're going to install the core and the minimal install for CentOS because we basically have the very, very base installation, so we need quite a few more packages to have a, a true CentOS install. Uh, you still may find the occasional package is not installed, so you can just do DNF install and then whatever the packages you require. But because we've got all the um, repositories, etc. installed, it shouldn't be a major problem. Good. The reason why yum failed, as we know, is the DNF is there. So finally, let's just do cat, etc. Not red hat, we sent us. The final thing to do is uh, just check your SSH configuration because we log in, log in as root. Uh, make sure permit root login yes is set. So make sure there's no um, hash or pound sign symbol in front of that line. If there is, make sure you delete that and do a right quit on that file. The file is in the yeah, etc. SSH, SSHD config. So that just configures the SSH uh, configuration. And we just do a service SSHD restart. And you can just make sure it's restarted. And then you can just do one more double check. It's just login again before rebooting the VPS. Just login again, login as root, and just make sure that all works. Okay, so now we can do a reboot and just make sure it all comes back okay. And we're in. Cool. So I can say that's been successful. So you've got all the commands um, as previous really, so there's nothing really you need to uh, worry about. You can do all the practicing you, if, as you want. Uh, obviously you can't do anything with the physical disks because you'll need some uh, an actual disk to insert into the drive. So stuff like that won't be able to be uh, practiced, but a lot of the other stuff like uh, VI and Nano, um, creating files, uh, touching files, all that sort of stuff, uh, doing um, things with the memory and looking at process information uh, via PS and all that sort of stuff. All of those can be practiced uh, using this VPS, so it's quite a good solution. Uh, again, I hope this video has been useful to you, and yeah, all, all the best for the upcoming new year. Yeah, I'll catch you next video. Uh, thanks again for watching. Check and make sure you use the link below in my, I'll put it in the uh, comments pinned, but I'll also put in the uh, video description on how to get to the hosting a special uh, deal for 60% off.